time. Okay, so the first question reads, are international students qualified for need blind admission? Um, no, to my knowledge, only domestic students, which are permanent residents or citizens of the United States can qualify for this, unfortunately, but the good news is that international students can still, and they should apply for scholarships. Um, I hope that helps. This next question looks like it's directed towards Mr. Bradley. Uh, what are some of the most commonly asked questions for interviews and how much should I prepare for them? That's a great question. And it really is a great question because as Melody pointed out earlier, the interview is a very, very important component of your application. Uh, it's the one opportunity you'll have to make that one-on-one -on -one face to face human uh, opportunity of helping them get to know you, giving them that impression of what kind of a person you are. Not all interviews will be done face-to-face. -face. Some will be done like this, online, uh, remote, digital, et cetera. Uh, but even still, you get a chance to act one-on-one -on -one with a person. Most of the time, that person will be on the committee, on the group of people that will decide who to invite to the school and who not to invite. So it's a very important moment. Training, Preparation for that is definitely something that could help you. Uh, interviews, doing well on interviews is both an art and a science. And training can help you get through a little bit of both. Uh, some of the common questions are, why do you want to go to our school? There, first of all, there are endless questions that can be asked. And interviewers range from young people who just got out of college who may have done admissions while they were in college uh to people like myself who've done it for decades over a quarter century who've met with tens of thousands of young people so it could be anybody it could be male female any ethnicity race nationality any kind of uh interest passion I'm an arts person myself. I love the arts. I'm a musician. I taught music at the school that I was at for a while. Uh, it could be athletic people. So you don't know who you're going to get, and anybody can ask anything. And they ask uh, pretty easy, fun questions like if you were uh, a fruit, which fruit would you be? If you were a salad, which salad would you be? Which vegetable would you be? And they ask very important things like what's your favorite academic discipline? What's your strongest class? What makes a good class? They almost always ask, what other schools are you looking at? Are you considering? Are you applying to? They'll ask that in a lot of different ways. But the most important questions they'll ask will be about you and what you like to do and what you want to do and what you hope to do at their school. I'm a believer that any question they ask should be answered by you confidently, clearly, and straightforwardly. And it should be answered in a way that promotes you without being braggadocious or egotistical or arrogant or anything like that. It's a fine line. It's a fine line. None of us likes to be interviewed. None of us likes to talk to somebody who's sitting across from us with a pad of paper and a pen and writing down everything we say. That's not a good feeling. But there's a way to make it a good feeling to make it work for you. And that's where interview training and interview preparation does come in. So the common questions are usually about your academics, your extracurriculars, what you like. The bottom line is they want to know what you would bring to their school. Whatever they tell you in the, in the, on the website or you just be yourself. They want to know what you can do for them. Because the students that they believe can do the most for them and have the skills, the talents, the experience and the character those are the students that they're going to invite. Wow, thank you so much for that thorough response. See, this is why you're the expert. I'm so glad to have you here. Uh, moving on, this one reads, how many schools did you apply for and how many were you accepted by? Um, I'm assuming this one's for me. Uh, I applied to 13 different schools and except for one, I got either accepted or waitlisted by all of them. Um, as you know, I ended up going to Choate, which accepted me. Uh, because first of all, it's already one of my top choices, but second of all, I think that it's safer to accept an invitation from a school that's accepted you um, instead of one that's waitlisted you. But I think that 13 in general is a pretty high number. I haven't met too many other people who applied to 10 plus more schools. I think the average number is somewhere between like anywhere from five to eight, 
But I also knew some gutsy people who only applied to one or two and were lucky enough to get in. So it honestly depends on you. That being said, um, you don't have to apply to that many, but for as much work that it is, I think that it was worth it because all the schools were pretty different in my eyes and I wanted to get to know all the different possibilities before I settled on one that I really wanted. So thank you for the question. Next on the list, does financial aid only cover tuition or does it cover room and board as well? That's a great question. Uh, after acceptance, if your family income qualifies for the need blind standards, it is 100% met. So this definitely means that it covers all tuition, room and board, books, and other study-related travel. But in other cases, I think that it's sort of a variation or sometimes it only covers tuition. It depends on your family's financial situation. Um, but some schools, including my own, have a fund set aside. I think ours is called Beyond the Classroom that covers non-academic activities. Um, and they provide money on a case-by-case -case basis to help pay for non-school related expenses like going on fun trips or um, paying for merchandise for a team sport that you play. Uh, just so that people aren't missing these technically non-essential but still community building experiences that it would be pretty sad for kids to miss out on that a lot of people take part in. So good question. Thank you for asking. All right, now we have another one, I think, for Mr. Bradley. What qualities and characteristics are the top boarding schools seeking from prospective new students? Thank you for that question. It's a great question. Um, all the schools, including the tops, are looking for basically three things. The first is academics, intellectual focus, proven academic success that has a lot of subcategories to it, how they measure it, but academics. This is school, academics. The second thing they look for is what I call uh, character with a capital C and personality with a small p. Because these are boarding schools primarily, even though there are many, many day students at all of these schools, except for St. Paul's, I think they're the only one that's 100% boarding but all the rest uh, have a, a mixture of boarding and day, different percentages, mostly boarding. They need to know and feel confident that every student there has high levels of character. They wanna know, but they do make allowances for understanding that different people, different cultures, different backgrounds will bring different uh, ways of looking at the world and being in the world, personality. But the character piece is non-negotiable. They have to know you are a good human being by every measure that they can assess that. Sometimes that'll be in the form of recommendations, your writing, your essays, your interview, which that gets to that, uh, and lots of different ways that they can look at your character. The third thing they look for is some kind of contribution outside the classroom to their community. That could be a lot of different things. Melody talked about them earlier. That could be arts, that could be athletics, that could be clubs, that could be leadership, service. It could uh, represent itself in who you are, what you might bring as an individual from where you come from, culture, diversity, uh, geography. It could be a lot of things, but that's what they want to know. What else are you bringing? Academics, character, and extra involvement in student life. Those are the things that they're mainly looking for. I wanna make one point and I'm so glad and, and again, proud that Melody pointed it out with her slide with the spike. Uh, all of these schools will tell you, particularly on their websites and their publisher, they're, they're looking for well-rounded students, students with a lot of interest and a lot of activity in different, different areas. And that's true, but they really want specialists. They really do. They will enroll a well-rounded class for sure. The combination of all the new students coming until say the ninth grade will be well-rounded. But among those individuals, they're looking for students with specialties, uh, extreme talent in certain areas. They want the star athlete. They want the virtuoso musician. They want the, the star scientist. They want the 
incredible historian. They don't want a whole class of well-rounded students. That won't happen. So uh, that's what they're looking for. So the better you are at something, as Melody pointed out earlier so eloquently, the more you emphasize it, the more you can present it, uh, demonstrate it through experience, through evidence, uh, the better your chances will be of having something that they want, which gets into your school research because you want to research the schools to see who likes what you have, who wants what you offer. If you play kazoo and you are a master kazooist, uh, find the school that has a kazoo orchestra and a kazoo band so you can join and that'll mean a lot. Uh, and that's obviously a little tongue in cheek way of expressing it, kazoo. I don't know anybody that plays kazoo. I used to play it. But uh, yeah, the better you are at something, the better chance you have of finding a place to a school that values that. So that's the third part, the, the extra part. That's after character and academics. Academics first. Grades, transcript, testing, out of school activities, level of rigor, all of that. I hope I answered the question. Thank you for asking it. Beautifully said. I love the three points. I love the conciseness. I love the kazoo. Everything about that was a great answer. Um, this one is again for Mr. Bradley. It reads, um, I am a pretty quiet and awkward person and I'm nervous about interviewing. What do I do if I am asked a question that I don't know how to answer in an interview? That is uh, a, good, a very, very good question because uh, that comes up a lot. Uh, I, I work with a lot of students helping prepare them for their interviews. And, and that's probably one of the most common uh, fears, apprehensions, concerns that students bring. My experience is that interviewers don't really want to put you on the spot. They're adults. You're not. They already know you're trying to get in. You want to make a good impression. They respect that. They don't want to put you on the spot and make it harder for you than that dynamic already is when it starts. Sometimes it happens. I think my extreme, I'll give you an extreme experience that I had. It was probably one of the most memorable. Uh, I'm a musician, as I talked about earlier. And I have some achievements and accomplishments from that part of my life and that career. And one day a family came and I was gonna interview them. I was scheduled to interview them. And the director of admissions was out there in the waiting room and he was just greeting people and saying hi. And he saw her and saw that she was gonna interview with me. And he said, be sure and ask Mr. Bradley about music. He loves music. <laughs> You'll get to his heart right away. He'll love you right away. Uh, and so she did that. So she came in my office and we started talking, started the interview. And she says, so uh, who's, uh, who's some of your favorite, your favorite uh, musicians? And I told her, I had two, two groups I gave her and I told her right away because they're my favorite groups I knew. And then I turned around and asked her, well, who's some of your favorite musicians? And she froze. And she just didn't say anything for a long time, like two, three minutes. When you're sitting with somebody face to face, two or three minutes can seem like two or three hours when the person says nothing. And I asked her again uh, in a different kind of way, but I asked it again and she started crying. And I was just taken because it was this 13 year old child talking to me and they're sitting in front of me crying. And I didn't know what to do. So I, I just kind of got up and opened the door and uh, offered a tissue. And as it turned out, she hadn't thought about it, she didn't know, and she felt bad that she didn't know what you said in your question. She didn't know how to answer it. She did. She froze, she felt bad because she froze and she couldn't get out of that. And all she could do was just cry. It was horrible for both of us, but especially for her, no question about that. Uh, that's just a bad, ex a, a bad experience example, the worst that I could think of. It doesn't happen often because I absolutely would not have asked her a question that would have brought her to tears had I had any idea that that was the case. So interview preparation helps avoid that. There's really nothing that you don't have an answer to. If you approach the interview as a conversation and as a moment for you to promote yourself 
and to push yourself up to make yourself look favorable, desirable as a student in the eyes of the interviewer. If you have that in your mind, which interview preparation helps to establish, you won't get in that position. You won't get in that situation. They're not going to ask you, well, what is uh, the square root of MC square, EMC squared? <laughs> They're not going to ask you any problems that you have to think about and you need to calculate. They're gonna, it's just going to be a conversation. And it's basically going to be a conversation about you. Every now and then you'll get an interviewer. I used to do it. They will ask something that's not about you just to lighten things up and get things, even something about world events or something that just happened with the Olympic hockey team or something like that. But most of the time, it'll be questions related to you. And guess what? You know you better than anybody else, despite what your parents think. You know you better than everybody. So any question about you, no one is better equipped and better prepared to answer it correctly than you are. The nervous part, I get. The being a little shy and quiet part, I get. But I'll tell you something. Shy, quiet, reserved, timid, those words are, you don't want those words anywhere in your application. You don't want your teacher to write them in the recommendations. You don't want the interviewer to write them in his or her report about their meeting with you. And the interview training helps to get you to the point if that's how you are, which many people are, it's okay, so it's fine. But for the interview, it is not a good thing to leave the interview with the words shy, quiet, reserved, timid. Those words are killer words on an application. You can have great grades, great activities. Your teachers say that and the interviewer says that. This gets back to the second thing that I talked about before of what they look for, academics, character, with the capital C and personality with a small p. It's a small p because it's not huge, but it is important. And if they get a sense that your personality is such that you may be a loner, you may be alone, you're not gonna contribute in class that much. You may not participate in the group activities. Melody outlined all the different kinds of groups you could be a part of, including for boarding students living in the dorm. If they get a sense that that is what you're going to bring, they're gonna shy away from you. And these schools get so many applications from so many people. Once they shy away, they shy away. They go on to the next applicant and they look and they will fill their spaces for the most part. Mm -hmm. So interview preparation is essential. It's essential. Most students don't have it. Most applicants, I'm sorry, they don't have it. They just go in and they do the best they can. They don't have an experienced adult professional expert working with them, helping them work through that part of who they are so they can feel more confident, more empowered, more eager, and more prepared to go into that moment of anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes, typically about 30 minutes, to go in there and make a good impression. And really, it's not hard to do, but it does take some practice. You do need some insight, some ideas that you never would have thought of to be able to do it and do it well. Thank you for that question. It was a great question. It's the most common question that I get from people who are preparing for interviews. Yep, that's definitely solid advice. It was a compelling story and I completely agree with everything that he said. And I hope that question helped you a little bit with knowing how you're gonna approach this coming forward. The next question is, oh, what do you think got you into Chone? Uh, well, I can't really say for sure. And actually, I don't think there was any one thing. It's probably a combination of a lot of stuff, including uh, like Mr. Bradley said, my academics, which were pretty strong. I had good grades, tested, well and scored pretty high in the SAT. Uh, I had a number of important extracurriculars. Uh, I was a competitive debater in middle school and achieved uh, citywide and national recognition, which definitely helps. Uh, I play the viola and the piano, and I had a couple of leadership roles, including one in community service. And I think that kind of helped my character and my personality shine through, especially the debate part. It definitely helped me with my confidence in interviews. Um, but if you're asking what my spike was, I think that was going to be the combination of debate in conjunction with what I was studying at the time, which was business and law, which made for a pretty strong spike with both those things combined thematically. 
but you know every person is different and the holistic process means that they take a lot of different things into account uh like mr bradley was saying earlier so it's never really one thing that either gets you in or keeps you out it's the culmination of all of it and the picture that it paints of you as a person and a student that they want at their school thank you for the question um next is another one directed at mr bradley oh you're getting a lot of interview questions so what are some common mistakes in interviews i guess besides what you've already outlined in your previous answers that's a great question and part of uh interview training that i uh that i help students with i we cover that in depth uh the do's and the don'ts uh mistakes are the obvious interrupting your interviewer not answering the questions i can't tell you how many interviews i've had where i would ask a question and the student would tell me something else they would answer something else they wouldn't directly answer the question that doesn't go well uh being too casual being too casual um and i've had that happen a number of times i'm really surprised at it um I think also asking questions that give the interviewer the opportunity to talk too long and answering your question. Trying to sound clever and informed, but really <clears throat> defeating the purpose of the reason you're there. Remember, from the school's perspective, the reason you're in that interview is so they can get to know you better, so they can find out more about your personality, your character, your interests. In some cases, so they can sell the school to you if they feel before you even walk in that they get to know you that you're really strong in some way, like Melody described she was, and they want to they want to make sure they have a chance because they know you probably applied to other schools, so they're going to sell their programs. Uh, but from your perspective. From from what you're looking at when you walk in there, you have one purpose to promote yourself, to sell yourself, to help the interviewer see you as a student there at that moment and later. When you ask questions, you're not asking to find out any information. You don't care about that. You're asking questions so you can make yourself look more favorable. For example, and this is a quick example, uh, mm -hmm. if you would ask a question about math, you want to know about the math department, something like that, or what math you would take, or what language you would take. A lot of students, because I ask them when we start interview training, I ask them, I say, well, ask the question. We're in an interview, ask the question. Oh, Mr. Bradley, uh, so could I join geometry honors? Um, that's the wrong way to ask it. And that won't help you at all. It doesn't hurt you, but it doesn't help you. The way to ask it would be to start with your your experience, your background, your interest, your passion, and then the segue into your proactive, mature interest and in research in their school and, and program, and even knowledge of specifics. And then you ask the question. And you never want to ask a question that's going to get a lot of feedback from the interviewer because they can talk. And you won't get any more of a chance to promote yourself. You want to get simple, concise, easy answers. You really want to get answers that you already know the answer to. So the question, they say, well, you have a question for me, student. Say, so, yeah, well, I've been on the math counts team for the last five years, and I've won uh, two state championships, and I'm actually studying an online course with this and that and this and that, and I've helped start a club to teach second and third graders math at my school. So with that passion in math, I've done some research on your program, and I see that in the, the Lanthier Center in the math building, uh, Mr. Bob has the most amazing geometry class, and I really want to be a part of that. So my question is, as a new student, would I be qualified to join an advanced level class? Well, you're going to know the answer to that because you're going to have done the research, and the answer is going to be either yes or no. So they're not going to take any of your time to ask your next question, which you'll ask the same way. But what you would have done is you would have given them a lot of information about you if they didn't already know, which they probably didn't. You would have shown them how proactive you were. You would have shown them that you know 
things about their program, their school, names of buildings, names of faculty, names of specific programs, and you would have shown a very proactive, mature involvement in research, investigation of who they are, and then you would have asked the question that has a simple answer, which interviewers love? They love answering questions that have simple answers. They don't want to say, well, you know, I don't know that, but they will tell you if they don't know it. I don't know that. I'll look into it and I'll, I'll get back to you. They'll tell you that in a heartbeat if they don't know it. But you don't want to ask them questions like that. You don't want to ask them questions like, well, what's the, uh, can you give me the teaching philosophy of the, you don't want to, don't, don't go there because they can talk for the rest of your time answering that question. And all of that information is usually available on their website anyway. So I hope I answered your question. I have a lot to say about this because I've done it a long time. I do appreciate that you asked me that. And I, I hope it was helpful. I hope this entire experience is helpful for you. So definitely very helpful, very thorough and well put. The next question is, does every school provide scholarships? Uh, if we're talking about schools in sort of like this, this type of school, usually they do. Uh, even ones that don't offer need blind admission often have school specific scholarships within them that they can award to gifted students. Uh, this is something else that you try to uncover during research, and it's almost always going to be on their website. Uh, Chode, for example, has something called the Icon Scholars, and they also have a Wallingford Scholars program, which helps stu local students from the area. And they have more, but um, that's just two that I can think of, uh, think about off the top of my head. And again, there are always the scholarships that are outside the purviews of the school. Uh, that you can look for if you would like uh, additional help. Hope that helps. And another one, where do I go if I need help from you on my application? Uh, well, you can take a look at Equitable Education Access's website for resources, where I'll be posting videos and articles elaborating on some of the topics that I discussed here today. Uh, there's also a page where you can contact me. Uh, basically, you just leave your name and email or some other way for me to contact you and whatever message you'd like to get across. So explaining your situation or any questions you have, any requests, et cetera. And actually, I'm gonna use that as an opportunity to leave off because unfortunately, we're just about out of time in this forum, but I'm glad that you guys are so interested in learning more about this. And again, um, I hope that this has been a valuable resource for you. I know that Mr. Bradley certainly has given some very valuable answers today that I hope you guys take to heart when continuing on your journeys. And if we didn't get to your question and you really want it answered, please head over to my website and go through the process that I just talked about. And I will get back to you individually with anything you want to know or any concerns you may have. So thank you for coming out, everyone. Have a good night, afternoon or morning, wherever you are. and. Enjoy the start of the school year because we are about to get back into it and I wish you all the best. Thank you.